Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. Now, we are not technically in a state today. Uh, this should be a state, but the District of Columbia, aka Washington, D.C., is not a state, but I do have a very good friend who lives there, and I know that housing prices are absolutely absurd in the district, so we're going to take a look and see what's going on. Uh, this is a 16 million five nine bedroom 15 bath house and from a just a preliminary visual inspection I I believe that this is marketed toward people who have just lost the presidential election and want to feel like they're living in the White House but maybe, on a smaller scale. This is like a consolation prize White House is the vibe I'm getting. Yep, we got these big grand columns, those what you call them fancy things up top. Have I mentioned I don't know much about architecture? You know, what's interesting is that I don't know if it's the perspective or this door that, I mean, that door might just be really huge, but in my mind, I'm making this like a standard size door and it makes this entire building look comedically small. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is just a gigantic door based on the level of these windows. So that's, but that's, you know what, you got to keep those perspective things in mind when you're designing a, a house, because otherwise it just looks like a funny little toy house. All right, let's 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 keep going. Oh, we've got daytime shots. Got some hedges, keep the riffraff out. It's, oh, we got a pool. We got a pool out back, back patio where it's nighttime again. Looks like we've got some covered seating there, some open seating. This pool, there's no light, like maybe there's lighting in there and they just chose not to light it up, but I, I wouldn't post this picture. This looks like the Black Lagoon to me. Uh, that's not flattering. That's, oh, oh, we've got floor plans. Well, let me see if I can do this for us here. Ha ha, there we go. That's a can-do attitude. All right, so here's the pool, the fountain, the terrace. They call that a logia. We're learning, we're learning. The covered seating is a logia. And then inside we're gonna have, ooh, there's a grand reception hall. It's all spoilers for later in the video. Formal living room, formal dining room. I'm, I'm sharpening the guillotine as we speak. We've got a full library. A pow we got two powder rooms, a walk-in closet, bath, the media room with the wet bar. Uh, back here we've got the butler's pantry. Gonna have a butler and kitchen and a breakfast nook. All right, so that's that's the first floor. Oh, that's a motor court. See, I'm learning all sorts of fun vocabulary. All right, another. All right, this, I believe this is the second floor. We've got, oh, we're, we're coming up from this grand reception staircase. Uh, we've got a, a master sitting room, a master suite, walk-in closet, ma two master baths, two master baths in case you really, really hate your spouse. And if you watch her brush her teeth, you are going to throttle her. You've got a full dressing room. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Bedroom two with a sitting room. Bedroom three does not get a, get a sitting room. So, all right, we're, we're into plebeian bedrooms over here, but they all have their own bathroom. And this is open to the family room below. I love, I love when you can spit on people in the family room below. That's a really good feature. Uh, I say that because one of my friends growing up had kind of that sort of setup and we we wouldn't spit on people but we would definitely drop things or like throw things or uh you know just stare at them from above and wait until they figured it out uh this is fun times all right and then the second the third floor we've got yet more bedrooms oh 
the upper upper level because there's a kitchenette in here i bet that's like the servants quarters they're supposed to be you know up there not neither seen nor heard or something like that and then we've got a basement with an office slash bedroom wine cellar three car garage all right let's get on to the actual pictures there was a fun there was a fun teaser little preview but we've got 71 pictures to get through so we're gonna we're gonna truck it along is this the grand foyer yeah because those are the big first doors so we got the grand foyer table with shit upon it uh we got this weird little powder puff oh we got them on either side here it's an interesting choice for such a formal room that looks like a chair that belongs in a teenager's bedroom uh lots of our oh the horse statue the horse statue is a choice all right i don't know that i hate it but it's it's bold i don't know that it matches the rest of this kind of ornate old timey vibe uh we got some woodwork detailing here that would be much nicer and more impressive it would if it wasn't all painted like the same solid brown gray uh can lights throughout mm -hmm. and then this grand staircase that goes up in this very ornate you can see all the artwork up there we got a shin interestingly the chandelier is not over the foyer table it's over the stairs themselves that's uh you know shaking things up all right another angle on that got big pieces of artwork that's you know the the rich love to use artwork as tax evasion so whenever you see all of this big artwork on the walls just think tax evasion um you've got a giant american flag i'm sure that's historical uh and some sort of it should probably be in a museum somewhere but fuck them and now we are where are we this is oh this is under the staircase you know what i like that because a lot of times you've got those grand staircases and then it's just open underneath and it's just kind of this awkward spot under the stairs so they've turned that into a bar that's kind of cute and clever i'm a fan that's all right points points to them for that this room is so pink i know i've been complaining about houses not having enough color but pastel pink with pink curtains uh, you, you know what you're allowed to pick more than one color for a room you are like you could have gone with this pink and then maybe done i don't know like like a deep green curtain or something yeah anything anything and then you got a pink lampshade and, and pink on these chairs oh boy it's just all quite pink all right let's let's oh there's an, there's another angle on it. oh there's more text of it that is a huge fucking painting my god there's uh, the the book and tables okay all right oh oh you know what for once i'm relieved to be in a gray room and you know what they've got this fun pop of color with the purple couch all right you know what this room passes this room gets a a pass on colors at least it gets a a big old minus for this creepy fucking horse what the shit is that um that mm, that thing is haunted oh there's another one on the other side okay we've talked about it We've talked about this weird rich people obsession with symmetry, you know, chair, 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 chair. They've everything, they need two of everything. They've got two of these weird little statue end tables and they've got two haunted creepy horses. <sighs> everything does not need to be symmetrical. Oh dear God. All right, there's, there's the other half of this symmetrical room as if you couldn't guess what it looked like from the one side that's not even a good picture is that just a giant blown up photograph of the inside of a theater and it's off center it's an off center photograph that is blatant just tax evasion art right there that's all they're doing they're just you know refusing to 
help the rest of us build roads. Uh, blue, lots of blue in this room. Um, it's not as egregious as the pink room, but I would again like to remind them that they could uh, and probably should pick two colors uh, to go in a room. That, that really, you know, balances things. Uh, this, oh, giant tapestry on the wall. Okay, there's a lot, lot of artwork going on in here. Um, I don't know what that is. Interesting. Uh, I haven't even really looked at this dining table. It's, I think it's just the shape that makes it seem a little small for this room, or maybe it's just that the ceiling is really insanely high. Um, like maybe they could have brought, I've, I've complained about them bringing the chandelier down too much, but like maybe just a, a smidge more, uh, just to make it seem like this isn't a teeny tiny table in the middle of a gigantic room. All right. We've got a little sitting area here and this is, wow, this is a, just a prime example of too much floor space and not enough stuff to put in it. Uh, we've got one sitting area over here, couch and chairs. We've got a little conference table over here. And then that conference table was still not big enough to fill up the space with that sitting room. So they just had to stick an extra two symmetrical chairs over here just, just for good measure. Um, more tax evasion art on the wall. I'm sure that's a big tax evasion art piece. Here's that, that gallery uh, from the second floor so that people can loom over you. And another view on the, oh, there's so much art on this wall. I, I love when they really feel like they have to cram art into every bear's place on the wall. You know what would help if you feel like you need to cram a picture on every bare piece of wall? Paint the walls something other than gray. Although in this house, maybe I should be careful about saying that because they will make the entire room Pepto-Bismol pink. All right, here's that little sitting area with nice, are those symmetrical chairs? I believe those are indeed symmetrical chairs. Those are symmetrical little display cases. Of course they are, I'm tired. Okay, the ceiling has some cool woodwork details up there. Those look like bookcases up there. That's kind of nice. Uh, they've hung a giant mirror up in a place that is so high up that no one can actually look in, like you, all you can see looking into it is probably the ceiling. You know what? That's a, that's a slick move for a vampire. That's what I'm going to say. If you're a vampire and you don't want to just like blatantly have no mirrors in, in the house because that's suspicious. Just hang them up so high that no one could possibly not see you in them. There you go. That's a problem solving right there. Oh, this is the, oh shit, what did they call it? What did they call it? I'm so bad at remembering these things. Uh, the, whatever the fancy word that we were supposed to learn out here on the covered seating. That's fine. Uh, let's keep moving. Another view on that. Another view on that. Covered pool. All right, this is this is an interesting little room here. This is oh, this must be the breakfast nook. Oh, I didn't recognize it as the breakfast nook because when I think breakfast nook, I think like cozy and warm and somewhere you would be with your family that you love but that's not what this space is this space is cold and eerie and i feel judgment in every piece and it's be partially because the ceiling is lined with mirrors so it's got panopticon vibes like you can't you're there's no hiding your peas in your lap or texting under the table because everyone can see from above what you're doing down there. And then this, this wallpaper, that's oppressive. I don't know what that's trying to do. I don't like this space. I don't like it. 
I don't like that it's all gray. Okay, you know what? I've I've complained a lot about the colors in this house. These are weird choices, but I'm going to let them have this. I'm going to let them have this because I I don't have any more fight left in me. <laughs> this is these are objectively horrible choices they've made here, but I feel like they've maliciously complied with all of my complaints. And at this point, I can't even... Are they displaying handbags? Is that what they're doing? These are purses that they're just displaying in the bookshelves? Buy a fucking book! Oh my god. Of course, there's a library in here. Gotta, gotta put all the books in the library. Are those shoes? What is this room? Okay. Oh, here's the movie theater. White chairs, because you know you're going to be eating in here, and so you're going to spill butter on that immediately. That's. But you know what? Stains are not your problem, because you're rich. Also, you might have noticed in some of the other in-home movie theaters and other houses that they were all black, because that's how you make a room dark, which you need it to be so you could watch the movie. Uh, they've really gone with a bold, different choice here in making everything white so that it's almost impossible to make the space dark. All right, we've got a kitchen. Got a kitchen. I, you know what? I see a lot of kitchen islands with just like a kajillion stools. I like that they've limited it. As someone who cooks a lot, I like that because it's like saying, okay, two people can be here with me and the rest of you have to go. You cannot be in here with me. Go away. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, they haven't hidden the fridge. In fact, this fridge is fucking massive. And way out in the open, they've got an industrial uh, oven and, and stove here. So this is for some really serious, heavy duty cooking. I would love I would love to cook in this kitchen. Uh, I assume that the residents do not cook in this kitchen unless it's like Hannibal Lecter. We might have a Hannibal Lecter in this kitchen, but more likely it's the help. They're just, they're hiring caterers and personal chefs to come in and cook in this kitchen. And they're probably very happy about it. Uh, not least of all because, do you see what I see? Do you see it? It's a pasta arm. I love the pasta arm. Oh, okay. Bury me with a pasta arm. It's it's a monotasking little pipe to fill your pots so you don't have to carry them from the sink, even though the sink is so close. But still, still, I love the pasta arm. I do. Okay. Uh, that's, is that a pizza oven or a a bagel toaster. It kind of looks like the bagel toaster I used to use when I worked at Panera in high school. Um, then I don't know what this is down here. Is that a, that might be a toaster oven or a deep fryer? Maybe there's a ladle. That's there's there's mysteries here. I would love to just get my hands on all of this. Um, oh, we got a TV in the kitchen. You know what? That for. All of the rooms that they cram TVs in, in these rich people houses, they will put TVs over the fireplace, in the bedroom. They, you know, they've got home movie theaters. You don't see TV in the kitchen very often. And you spend a lot of time in the kitchen just like standing around kneading dough or, you know, mindless vegetable peeling. And it, a TV is awfully nice. I'm, I'm starting to think more and more that you've got an actual person who lived here who was really into cooking. That this is, this is not just for the help. This was someone that lived here that was using all of this. This is a lovely kitchen. The color's nice. The tile's nice. I'm in love with this kitchen. I gotta say, I, ra I mostly do these videos just to rag on things, but no notes. No notes. I would sell my soul for this kitchen. It's beautiful. Oh, man. 
got oh this is okay so i'll tell you what's going on here is this is the main kitchen over here and this is like a serving preparation dishwashing area that's why there's multiple dishwashers all down the line here they're they're hosting like really big events in this house and so you hire caterers and then this is the whole area where they are preparing to take things out and then they're washing dishes afterwards so that's that's what all of this is and then that goes through to the formal dining room uh, we got a little office crammed in a corner here. Like maybe if you just need to have work close at hand all the time. Or otherwise, I, I've seen a lot of houses that have like this little desk tucked in a corner. But it always seems like, oh, we didn't have space to put a desk somewhere else. So we've got, you know, this little workstation just shoved in wherever we could fit it. Obviously not the case in this house. This house is huge, so I don't know why it's there. All right, another angle on the kitchen. And we're upstairs. We're up that grand staircase. We've got a dome in there. We've got the chandelier not in the dome. All right, lots of big tax evasion artwork over here. You know what? You know what? I, I could complain that they should have picked another color to balance it out. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because I think this is like a playroom. I think this is a children's room. I think that's why there's like stuffed animals and this looks like maybe kids books. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Maybe, you know, that, that kitchen might have softened me up too much. I'm in too good a mood now. Um, okay, but that's enough green. Pick another. Especially you've got like this You've got this border along the ceiling. You, you could have kept the bright green up here and then gone like a, a few shades paler down here. That You had so many choices. You had so many choices and you made the wrong one. And again, you've got way too much floor space. This is... I don't want to sleep in a room this big. It's like sleeping outside. I don't want to sleep under a ceiling this high. Like, we, we're... We're animals. We want to sleep in little dens. I want to be cozy. I don't feel cozy in this room. I feel like I'd be sleeping in an amphitheater. We've got, are those birds? What the f- Okay. And, oh, we found it. We finally found it. We've got a TV over the fireplace. There it is. TV over the fireplace. We've got a chandelier in the bedroom, because why not? Because- you know what when i'm sleeping i really want to be thinking what if that chandelier falls on me in the night got a little couch sitting area this feels okay i will give it that having this sitting area here feels a little less egregious than what i've seen in other spaces because it's neither like it's not a separate area of the room but they're also not like directly looking at the bed like this looks it's, it's a different vibe. It's a better vibe. Um, that goes through to the playroom. So this is like some kid's room. You don't put a kid in a bedroom this big. First of all, is that a skylight? You know kids go to bed be before the sun goes down in the summer. So it's not even going to be dark in here. And there's going to be weird shadows from all the crystals on the chandelier and the room being too big and there being these weird pieces of furniture. They are going to see monsters in every corner and they're not going to feel cozy or safe and they're going to grow up that way and they're going to turn into little billionaire psychopaths. That's how that happens. That is how we get little billionaire psychopaths. We put children in rooms like this. All right. Let's move along. We've got a balcony. That's a fine balcony. Uh, it's a bathroom so big it has a foyer table with shit on it and a chandelier overhead. I love the mini foyer in the bathroom. Spectacular. Spectacular. Uh, is that... This looks like it was supposed to be a big bathtub. Maybe this is a dressing room. I don't really know what this room is. I thought that this was a big bathtub, but I see now that it's just a shelf for crap. And there's this little bench around it that's too narrow for anyone to comfortably sit on. 
let's let's hunt for clues. Let's see if we can figure out what this is. That's okay, that's the bedroom. That seems to be the bathroom through there. Oh, here's a different bathroom. This this is a really uncomfortable stonework. That that looks like meat to me. I'm getting like meat vibe. It's too dark and the the white running through. Mm, I don't like that. I don't like that and I don't like that it's the floor and the wall. Would not the fact that that entire shower is filled with it and you know that glass probably fogs up and goes opaque and you're just alone in that bathroom with the meat tile. Mm, no, would not. Okay. Here's that balcony over the living room. All right. Very white, bland bedroom. I don't know what these panel things are there for, other than maybe to reflect the light to make it a little brighter. Uh, we got a writing desk. Got spectator chairs so that people can watch you fuck. Um... Here's another bland room with spectator chairs. That's just a single chair just blatantly looking over here. Got a room divider that doesn't divide the room. And a little desk over here. We do have a TV so that you can ruin your sleep hygiene. And... Oh, here's another angle. Got a desk with a treadmill next to it. You know what? I gotta say, this is a good way to motivate yourself. Because either you really, really, really don't want to work, so you get on the treadmill just to avoid working, or you really, really, really don't want to work out, so you actually sit down and do work to avoid getting on the treadmill, and you have to pick one or the other. The problem, of course, is that the TV is here, and, you know, in theory, the TV is there for when you're on the treadmill and want to watch TV, but no one can stop you if you want to sit in this chair and watch the TV. That's a trap right there. This is a nice, this is a nice color. They've figured out that colors can be colorful and yet not ostentatious. Uh, now the negative, why is the door painted? Why are the door frames painted? You leave those. The crown molding, crown molding you should have left. The details you leave and then you paint just the wall. Why did you pull a landlord? and paint all the woodwork. Why'd you do it? Okay, here's another angle on that. Is that leopard print? Is that fucking leopard print? Didn't we just go through the leopard print debacle in the De in the Delaware house? What is with this? And leopard print. Okay, we've got an elevator. That's, uh, okay, we've got this very bleak, small little room. I don't know what that room is, but I I feel like it's a holding cell. You know, like like this is a room in Big Brother. There's a camera in the ceiling and you're just put in here to like stew or something. I don't know. I don't know. This room is also like small and weird and bleak. Um maybe it's the lack of window i don't maybe it's just that the walls are all white and this floor is like a hotel floor i it's an ominous room this is also an uh, like this is the the bed is too big for the room first of all or just too ostentatious for like how plain the rest of the house is so nice there's not even crown molding in this room and it's not like every room needs crown molding but compared to imagine that you walked into that grand foyer with all of the like multi-million dollar pieces of art on the walls and they were like oh let me show you to your room and then it's this imagine that it's oh this oh that's because do you know why it's because we are in the servants quarters that's that's where we are right now. These are the servants' quarters because there's the kitchenette. This is where the help lives. This is where the live-in maid and nanny and butler all live. And that's why those rooms feel like prison cells. Because fuck them. Here's the three-car garage. Um, here's the view from the street. 
and that's Washington DC. It sure was different. I'm glad I'm glad that we looked at it because this was very different uh, culturally and vibe wise from a lot of the other houses we've been looking at and there's definitely um, a, a unique rich person culture I think in DC because it is you know the land of politicians there's there's a lot wrong with this house um, would I put up with all of it for the kitchen maybe maybe I do this kitchen I'm gonna I'm gonna be thinking about this kitchen for a long time I am I'm gonna be honest with you I, if I had to rate this house, if I was doing a rating system, this would skew the entire thing. All right. Uh, if you've got anything uh, that you noticed that you think I missed, if you disagree with anything I say, uh, feel free to leave some outraged comments. Uh, like, subscribe, and other than that, you have a good one.